Okay. So I want to welcome everybody today to our Zoom session, our webinar, Making a Powerful First Impression. And we are lucky and happy to have Michelle Malashi. I hope well I pronounced done. it right. Uh, here to present uh, top five tips on how to make a powerful first impression. Uh, one of the reasons uh, we wanted to do this webinar is because as business owners, as um, job seekers, as individuals, it is important to have a great first impression. Uh, so we wanted to let Shelly share some great tips. Uh, she is a former news anchor uh, she's a styles coach. Uh, I know I'll miss a few things, but, not, but I'll, I'll turn it over to her now so that she can give a little bit more background about herself and share with, her, share with us her top five tips. Yep. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. I'm thrilled to do this with you guys. I like SCORE. I've joined a few of their meetings over the past couple of weeks, so I know what you're about, and I support you guys, and I'm glad you're having me. And I was thinking about impressions and who is going to be on the grid tonight and what we do for a living, right? Some of us are, well, I don't think anybody on the grid is trying for a job. So an interview might not be what we're looking at right now. Well, maybe it is, but a lot of us are front facing people, right? Where Jack is chief technology officer. Chuck is an auctioneer. Jerry is in sales. These are just the people that are coming right to me right now. You guys are forward facing. So what somebody thinks of you, in the seconds they lay eyes on you is paramount to your success, paramount. And I have some ideas, proven ideas that were taught to me on how to change how people perceive you quickly, easily. You don't have to go on a diet. You don't have to join a gym. You don't have to buy a whole new wardrobe worth of clothing. These are my top five expert tips that I'm gonna share with you. So you should write them down because the pearls, people, pearls of wisdom. Would it interest you to know that when you walk in a room, people make a decision about you, some serious decisions about you, within the first three seconds of looking at you? One, two, three seconds. In those three seconds, science has found that we decide whether or not you're educated and how educated you are. High school degree, PhD whether or not you're successful, whether or not you're professional, whether or not you have money, whether I'm not gonna work with you, trust you, like you, hire you, or buy your product. Three seconds. And that just, you haven't even opened your mouth. You just walked in the room. All of that has been decided in our little gray matter. The good news is you can change it. You have control over so much of those first three seconds. The better news is I'm the expert that's going to tell you what they are. And I have been taught how to do this skill, right? My career in television, I was an on-air talent. That's what they call it, on-air talent. I was a news anchor. I was a reporter. And the stations, I worked for CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox, and a little bit with the Weather Channel. And all of them bring in a consultant to work with their on-air talent. They teach us how to do our hair, how to do our makeup, what clothes we're going to wear, how to stand, how to speak, how to make eye contact, how to interview the governor. These are taught skills that can be taught. I was taught. So I'm going to teach them to you. Okay. My number one, number one of top five that I tell people to do when I'm working with somebody Get your hair cut. I know it sounds like not a big deal. It is the number one thing. Yes, Chuck, get your hair cut. It does something. It keeps you relevant. And there's a certain time in life where we start to disappear. Men and women, as we age, we become less relevant in the room. And the number one way to bring information back and bring attention back is to cut our hair. Who on the grid has had the same haircut for a decade? Or two? Or, yeah. <laughs> I ask you to do something. Find a photo of what you think is cool, what you think is 
on trend right now, what you see movie stars wearing, what you like, and bring it to your stylist or barber and say, can I have this haircut? And get something cut that's now, that's relevant, that ups your cool factor. You will be noticed instantly. It will change instantly and you'll hear people talking to you. Instantly. Men, when we say hair, I mean your nose, your ears, your eyebrows, all of it. Get, pay, pay attention to that stuff, because we are. Beard. Chuck wears a beard, and he keeps it full. And I like it. Chuck keeps his beard tailored, clean. Keep it as clean as you can. I like a trimmer beard. I would even go trimmer than Chuck, but he keeps a nice beard. You know what the trick is with a beard? Shave your neck. That's what keeps you looking clean, right? Jerry, you have a great beard. I love the way you wear that. Jack, yours was blue during COVID. Dyed it purples and blues, that kind of thing. That's great for men with hair. Cut your hair in a current on-trend style. Take care of all your hair, nose, ears, eyebrows. Shave your neck. Wear hair gel, guys. Hair gel does a couple things. It smells really good. It's just the right amount of smell. You're not walking in a room and choking anybody out with cologne. It holds your hair, and it makes you look like you gave it some effort. People notice when you give it just a little bit of effort, a little bit of hair gel, give it a shot. Ladies, same with you with hair. Do, do I say cut it all off? Absolutely not. Wear your hair long and gorgeous as long as it is long and gorgeous. Keep it healthy. Keep it in style, keep it on trend, keep it relevant. We have a lot more room to play with our hair than maybe some of the guys do, right? So feel free to find your favorite magazine, your favorite actress, bring it in and ask, can I have this hair? If it takes you nine hours to style it every day, that's no go. It's not going to work. We all know that, right? Find a style that you love to do. Hair. You know what else? As long as we're talking neck up. Glasses. Glasses can make or break you instantly as far as you look older, not relevant, not hip, not with the times. Yes, Jack put on a nice pair of glasses. Jerry, I like your glasses. Look what happens when I put on my glasses. Just kind of changes your face, doesn't it? It just, I just took a whole new look. They're black. They're a thicker rim. They're plastic. They're right on trend. All, all the kids are wearing them. What about red? What do you think? Put some color on your face, right? Changes the whole look of you. And if you're good enough to wear like yellow or something with a pattern on them or a cat eye, you know what is going to happen when you meet somebody? They're never going to remember your name. They've met 15 people. They don't know your name. You know who they remember? That lady with those glasses. That is how you will forever be remembered. And that's what we want, right, when we make an impression. I want you to remember me. I have two pairs in purple and blue. Yes, my Irish friend. Yes, it matters. <laughs> so we've got you covered from the neck up, right? This is how we can handle our image immediately and quickly. And a haircut isn't breaking the bank. And buying new glasses isn't breaking the bank. We should be getting them every year or two anyway, shouldn't we? So let's talk about what we're going to wear because that does hit home, right? If you're going for something important, something where you're showing up for a meeting, an interview, uh, something where you wanna make an impression, if you like money and if you wanna make money, wear a suit. Studies have found that suits, tailored suits for men and women, you are seeing as if you are more professional, uh, you make more money, you're more successful, and all of those things mean I want you. I want you to be my friend, I want to know you, and I want to work for you. You may be none of those things, but if you show up in a suit, a tailored suit, you're already ahead of the game. Those first three seconds when I look at you, you're in a tailored suit, I have not dismissed you. Your hair is cut, you're wearing cool glasses, and your neck is shaved, I have really not dismissed you. Don't go out and buy a brand new suit. I don't think you need to, unless, of course, it's a decade or two old. 
even if it is, invest in the tailor. Take it to the tailor and see what they say. Because sometimes those pant legs can be kind of brought in a little bit, which is much more on style. The slim look is much more stylish these days. Pant legs can be taken in. Make sure your jacket fits you. If it's too small, there ain't nothing that ruins a good look than a too small jacket, man or woman, right? Get it to fit you and invest in a little tailoring. Make sure the sleeve hits where it should. Make sure those shoulders hit where it should. Ladies, let that jacket be able to close. Maybe you won't wear it closed, but be able to close it over the front of you. That kind of tailoring, that kind of look is what makes you look like you already made it. And if you look the part, you are the part. We believe what we see. And again, add some color. I am wearing a beautiful paisley printed colorful shirt. Guys, they have shirts like this for you as well. Underneath a navy blue suit, just enough is going to show. Just enough, right? And you're going to be the guy who wore that cool shirt. Or a new tie. Invest in a new tie. Make it colorful. Make it plaid with yellow in it. You'll be the guy in the yellow tie. Ladies, suits are great. Feel free to wear a dress. Feel free to wear pants. This is what we're going to do. It's going to fit you perfectly. It's not going to be too big. It's not going to be too long. It's not going to be too short. It's going to fit you perfectly. And find a color that you love. Because when you show up on Zoom, for example, Jack, your red is popping right now. Sherry, your red is popping. Chuck, your yellow is definitely popping. At the end of the day, someone's going to say, I remember that lady. What was her name? She had on that peach dress with the white polka dots. See what I mean? Make an entrance. Be remembered. Wear something that somebody's going to remember. Okay, we've covered your head and your body. What are you guys thinking? We haven't covered shoes. Should we talk about shoes? We have to go all the way down to the floor. Here's a thought. Tell me if you're with me on this. I get on an elevator and I look down and the first thing I notice are shoes men's shoes especially. Men's shoes that are European are often expensive, well-made, and in great condition. I immediately want to stand by that guy. Shoes tell you a lot about someone. And I don't think we take as much care in America as we should about shoes, ladies and guys. I think if your shoe is scuffed on the toe, if the heel has lost its little cap on the heel, if you have smudges or uh, laces that are tied, that is a deal breaker. It, your toes point when you're interested. <laughs> Those shoes can be a deal breaker in that if you're going to spend money on something, let it be a new pair of nice leather shoes. If that's where you're going to spend your money, don't buy a brand new suit. Don't pay $1,000 for some kind of new anything clothing-wise. But if you're going to spend it, it's on shoes. Ladies, closed-toed shoes are always more professional. I know they're conservative, and I know in, in the Deep South, anything closed-toed, you know, you're just you're melting, right? But if you can get away with it, a closed-toed shoe, if you're having an important meeting in front of somebody or an interview, just tilt towards the conservative. Just give yourself that edge. It'll pay off. It won't hurt you. That's for sure. Okay, I'm reading my, um, my notes here, you guys. What are you saying? Uh, after I wore my first tailored suit, I noticed others wearing the same. Absolutely. Because, Chuck, you look like money. That's why. Everybody wants money. All right, let's move to our faces. You know that thing called a resting face, you know? I don't want to say the bad word, the resting face. Yep, that one. Don't have that face. The way not to have that face is to practice your face in the mirror. Because if you're talking to somebody, if you're making a sale, if you're saying something that you're uncomfortable with, well, my product is $1,000 for the hour. You know, you've got to be able to say that without doing this. Oh, my God, I'm $1,000 an hour. That's not how you come in right? I interviewed the governor 
when he and George Bush, when I was working at ABC in Austin, Texas, when I walked in that room and I'm all at 20 something years old, if I didn't have myself pulled together, like you wouldn't believe and have my television reporter face on, I don't think I could have carried it off because I wasn't that good, but I looked the part. And I practiced that face. Actually, I saw myself on camera all the time. I would, you know, you're a television reporter, you see yourself all the time. You guys may not. So practice your face in the mirror. Practice your resting face, because on Zoom, as I'm looking at all of you looking back at me, right? You don't want to have that face, because I'll be like, oh my God, did I offend somebody? Yes, Jack, that's it, right? When somebody gives you bad news, don't lose your cool. That is not the time to have your face fall. You keep it together. That's the polished professional. Practice that, you guys. Practice somebody saying something to you you don't like. What's your face do? Don't give it all away. The top dog wins who keeps it together. You can go fall apart in the bathroom later. Don't do it in front of anybody that matters. Practice your face. Another thing we're going to practice is saying thank you. So many of us, when given a compliment, hey, D, you put together the best presentation. You really held the room's attention. What a great thing. Oh, it wasn't just me. Jack helped and Sherry helped and it wasn't me. No, it was all you. All you have to say is, thank you. And close your mouth. Don't demur. Don't give the power to somebody else. They see you. You're at the top of your game. You say thank you. It takes practice because a lot of us want to downplay. We don't want to seem like we're boastful, right? That's gone. That's out the window. A confident person, a person who's got it together says, thank you. Okay. How are you guys feeling? What am I missing? Are you, are you with me? Okay. You know, this only works if you're drinking the Kool-Aid. This only works if you really believe that you look good, you pulled yourself together, you know you look good because your hair is on point, you love your new style, you love your glasses, your clothes fit, you know your face, you know your strengths, you know you're good. Drink your own Kool-Aid every day and wear it. You deserve your wealth, you deserve your success, you deserve your confidence. That is how it's done. Those are my top five. Thanks for having me. I can't hear anybody. You're all muted. Hey, that was awesome. If there's something that, you know, like um, what's happening these days, everybody's growing out their hair because we can't get into um, salons. So a lot of the ladies, that gray line is like right here, right? And they're like, oh, well, I'm just going to go gray. Anybody with me on this one? Yes. No. I have a no. No. You're tolerant. Absolutely yes. No. Absolutely Absolutely right. no. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of ladies are. If you do that, remember when you go all gray, everything changes. Your lipstick changes. Your your color of your skin, right? The clothes you wear. It's a whole different shift in what you're presenting. So remember, if your friends, family, somebody's going to go all gray you're going to have to pop up that color because you tend to get a little washed out, especially on lights, especially on Zoom. How are you guys doing on Zoom? Do you feel comfortable on the camera? Do you think you're doing it right? I do, but I'm curious uh, if there's some things we should do differently because of Zoom. Yes. Also trying to get the lighting correct. And I know that plays a big role. In the depth. lighting is tough. Yeah. Um, lighting is tough. I, and I'm not sure if you know, people want to see this mug. <laughs> they want to see you. People definitely want to see you, right? I mean, it's our human nature to want to interact with people. Zoom, a couple things on the camera. Um, and I am looking at the grid, but what you should look at when you're making a contact with somebody is camera. right into the camera. Yeah. Look, stare into that little dark circle, which is hard to do. It seems so unnatural. Because I just looked down back at you. I want to see your response to what I'm saying. You know, I want your eye contact. And your eye contact is not living in that little circle. Your eye contact is down here. But you see the difference. Mm -hmm. So practice if it's just a one on one with somebody answering into the camera, you know, answering into that little black circle. That matters when you're on Zoom. Sherry. 
Yeah, so you, um, can you talk a little bit about colors and selecting colors that work for your skin tone? Like when you're doing mm -hmm. Zoom and what, what people yes. should think about? Yes, um, another part, and pattern too. L stripes, like um, sailor stripes, like little tiny stripes, don't do well. The camera can't quite focus on them. It gets a little blurry. Same with real tight little pattern shirts, tiny little dots all through the shirt or tiny little grids all through the shirt. The camera just shimmers. It just can't quite focus on you. Stay away from patterns and tiny little dots on that camera. Your best bet is to wear a solid color. Orange, green, blue, red, yellow, purple, solid color pops on camera. I have um, Paisley on, but there's a lot of different color in here. So I think I show up pretty well. But if this would have been like maybe a deeper purple, I really, you can really pop on camera that way. The camera loves to absorb a lot of color. So give it more than you normally would. If you feel like blaze orange is just not your everyday color, I promise the camera will absorb it and it'll work by the time you show up. Same with makeup, ladies. Put your makeup on and then put it on again because the camera will absorb that color. Still camera's different. Moving video camera will absorb that color and you'll look okay. Go heavier than you normally would. And guys, feel free to wear some makeup. A lot of men do. All the anchors and reporters that I worked with all did. Powder, you know, you can get a little nose powder just to get it out of your girl's bag and give it a shot. It, it makes a difference. It's worth trying because we're doing this on Zoom forever, right? I feel like we're always going to be here. I have a light on the desk that's right here in front of my camera. And as I get close, you can see it lightens up my whole face, right? And if I step back, I still have some light on me. So do what you can to get some light in front of you, wear some bright saturated colors because the camera's gonna suck them up and put your lip on and wear your colors darker than you normally would. Excellent. Elizabeth, I went all gray in my 30s. At that age, you have to own it. Cheers, girl. <laughs> when I wear my navy blue blazer on Zoom, it just looks flat and disappears. Yes. Take a white shirt underneath it, Jack, a white collared shirt. Let that collar, don't pop your collar like this, but let your collar come up underneath that and mm. let that white because the lights and the camera will go to it and it'll brighten your whole face. Okay. Next time you're wearing navy blue, try a white crisp shirt. And I know you've got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else are you guys thinking about being confident, walking in a room, making eye contact? Shoulders up. I always tell my girls, Posture. boobs out, girls, boobs out. Men, <laughs> chest out. That's how we walk in a room. Shoulders back, up, chin up, lead, lead strong. You guys, I promise you, fake it. Fake it until you walk in that room. I'll, Jack, I told you the story, and you thought it was a cool story. So if you guys will give me a minute, I'll tell you this one. I'm in my 20s. I'm covering the governor of Texas. George W. Bush at the time, and I get this interview with him, and I'm wearing a navy blue pinstripe pantsuit and purple lilac colored suede penny loafers. It looked good, you guys. It really did. And I do my interview with the governor, and he was wonderful and lovely. And at the end, he commented about my shoes. And he said, well, purple shoes, those are pretty fabulous. And I said, thank you, governor. And that was the end of it, right? Now off we go, and I do my news story. And about a week later, um, the governor's going to give a big presser. And the governor comes out, and he's at the podium, and all of us are there. CNN is there, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, you know, the big pressers. And we're all got our microphones up, governor, governor, because we're all trying to get the name, or his attention. You know what he did? You. Purple shoes. Purple shoes. Go ahead. I didn't have those purple shoes on, but he remembered, remembered what you. I wore. And this little ABC affiliate got the first question from the governor. Huge win. Huge. Ooh. So the next time I went, anytime I interviewed the governor, my purple shoes were on. <laughs> Smart. You know, isn't that crazy? What a win. What a win. Yeah. Love it.
Are you guys thinking anything else? We good? I'm good. I feel like I've given you everything. I got, I got nothing. I got nothing oh. left. Can you list the top five again? Top five. Get a haircut. Haircut. New glasses. Oh, glasses. Beer glasses? No beer glasses. New glasses. <laughs> Tailor your clothes. Right. You don't have to buy new ones, but get them tailored. And wear some color. Practice your face in the mirror. Practice your responses. Practice your emotions. Practice how you look. What was my other one? Say thank you. That's five. Yeah. Learn to be in the spotlight. Learn to take that attention. Learn to like the attention. Get used to it. You're the rock star in the room. They get attention. Say thank you. And drink your Kool-Aid. Your <laughs> own Kool-Aid. Yeah, that was the hardest. Believe in it. Yeah, to, that's hard. That, that compliment. You know, I get off stage and people walk up and great job. And it's always been, oh, it's, it's the team. It's the team. And, you know, that's one of the first things you told me was simply say thank you. So thank you for that. Practice, Chuck. It makes a difference, right? And you're gracious about it. You're not being snobbish about it. You're wonderfully gracious. You're like, thanks. I'm glad we did such a great job for you because I am a rock star and you should know that. That's your invoice, not the out voice. <laughs> and another thing, as far as the tailoring suit, I'd never noticed the people around me that were wearing tailored suits until I had my first suit actually fitted. And it's just like when you buy a new car. Oh, everybody's driving the same car I've got. But it's not, the, it's just, you're more aware of it. And it really did open my eyes to those around us that, you know, that wear tailored clothing. And Absolutely. I mean, it cost me $35 to have my jacket taken in. Oh, that's it. That's it, yeah. It, and, and it makes such a difference, especially on guys, right? Because you guys are V-shaped. You've got wonderful broad shoulders and your, your jacket Tailoring makes you look like you're James Bond. It does that. It's a beautiful thing. Who doesn't want to be James Bond? Get the jacket tailored. And you kind of join that club, that club of accomplished, professional, polished, pulled together, that club. That's the club you belong in. And it's because you tailored your suit. There's so much scientific studies done on tailoring specific tailored suits. People seen pictures, 300 photos of men in tailored suits and men in just off the rack suits. And they had to judge what they thought was the most professional, the most successful, the most moneyed. Guess who they picked? Every yeah, single time, every single time, a tailored suit. And when you start noticing it, like Chuck did, you'll see it. You're like, oh, that's what that is. And ladies, the same goes for us. Tailored clothing, I'm telling you. I think Michelle Obama had a lot of her clothes tailored. And she always just looked. I'm sure she must have had him tailored. She looked too good. Taylor, make their, your tailor your best friend. <laughs> yes. There are some nice masks out there, a ribbon underneath so it doesn't mess up your makeup or slow your breathing. That's a great idea. How can that work? Hmm? And ribbing them underneath. Oh. So it doesn't rub on. Tell me, what do you think about those masks? Oh, she's muted. Wait, stand by. She's plugging in. Yeah. <laughs> I love Zoom. you talk and at the word. Yeah. Also, no eyes to the floor. That's good. Yeah. I'm sorry I couldn't hear you, but I like the idea of a mask with ribbing so it doesn't mess up your makeup or slow your breathing. Yeah, kind of holds off. It doesn't rub, right? And you can rub it all off. Type it in the chat, she says. Yeah, yeah. Um, how many of you guys actually keep eyes on the floor when you walk in the room? You guys do that, or you actually look around the room when you walk in? Uh, I've I mean, taught I, my. 
I've had to teach myself think, to look up. Really, Jack? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. You've told me that about you, and it surprises me. Mm-hmm. What's that, Chuck? I'm just admiring everybody's shoes. I am. <laughs> I so look at shoes. I, mean, I look at shoes. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the, the guys, uh, I have my nails done about once a month, give or take, and I make sure that my shoes are, are shine because when I'm shaking people's hands, that's one of the things that I look for is does do the guys take the time to take care of their nails? Because really nice. Nails, that's those little those little bitty things tell me so much about somebody. You know, I was at a well, Jerry, you know, what was it last night, night before, that I looked at that guy and I said, Are you a doctor or a lawyer? Oh, really? Because of his hands? I, his, he was, the way he presented himself, I could tell that he was somebody who was very self-assured of his position. And you know, I was glancing around the room looking to see who was in the room. And I noticed that he, he had his nails done. His, even though he was in very casual clothing, I could tell that everything he was wearing was not bought at the Kmart that just closed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. To New and Orleans, go all the way to London to get their clothes. That's <laughs> fancy. That's fancy. But I got to tell you guys, it's not always the dollar amount that you're spending. To be sure, when you spend good money on good clothes, it's gorgeous and it shows. But if you don't have it, don't feel like it's game over, right? Iron. Press it within an inch of its life. It is the best pressed shirt you've ever put on. There are no buttons missing. There are no holes. It is just pressed. It's taking that time, taking that time to shine your shoes. They don't have to be brand new, but they're clean and they look good. Your shirt is pressed. Your hair has gel in it because it meant you did something to it. It just took a hot minute to invest. You invest in you, I think you're going to be interested in investing in me as your client, me as your uh, professional work cohort, me as somebody that's going to go into business with you. You know, think about that. All of it is so subconscious anyway. You haven't opened your mouth in the first three seconds and we subconsciously decided if we even like you. How do we know? Because we're making decisions about how you look. And it's all controllable. Okay, so tomorrow, kids... Here's your, here's your task. Get dressed. Get dressed for real. I know you might not be leaving the house. I know people may not be looking at you, but you're looking at you. You walk past that mirror and catch yourself looking a hot mess one more day, you're going to just cry. All those sayings, when you look good, you feel good. You know, you can never get a second chance to make a first impression. All those sayings come from somewhere. Get dressed tomorrow. And see if you don't have a different day. See if putting on your face, shaving, if you haven't shaved in a while, getting dressed, go the extra mile. Do it for you and see if you don't have a fundamentally different day tomorrow. That is my challenge to you. And go to brunch. Okay, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for being a part of this. You're wonderful. Thank you for showing up for me. Oh, I'm going to put my information in the chat. If you want to catch up with me, you can copy and paste. Thank you, Shell. Thank you, Cheryl. Thanks, Steve. Bye. Thanks for being on. Bye, Thank guys. You. It was wonderful. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right, Shelly, we'll see you all in the morning. In the morning.